set in the Dales, in 90 acres of uh, woodland and meadowland. Just a wonderful place to be able to reflect and be in God's presence. Hi, I'm Phil, Phil Stone, and I'm the director here at Scargill House in the Yorkshire Dales. Uh, my name's Adrian Plass. I am a writer. I'm not sure what my role here is. Writer in residence and all sorts of other things. Yes, things we can offer, actually. We try to offer. One is that we're a place of hospitality and a place of welcome. I think we really want to be God's welcome to people who come through their, those doors, so wherever they may be, whatever their background. That's right. Secondly, I think we're a place of prayer. You know, we, as a community, are developing our prayer life together. We meet three times a day to pray together, and uh, we have other times within the week where we meet as well to worship and pray and talk together and that sort of thing. And I think that's really important, being a house of prayer. And thirdly, we want to be a place of resource, a place of encouragement, a place of renewal for people who come through our doors. One of the things that we had to start with was actually forming a community. And that was the first thing that we did. And uh, when we arrived, when Di and I arrived here, there was just six of us here. Mm. And by September of last year, we had grown to about 16. So that's quite a big increase. Okay. And, and the challenge of living together is, I think, uh, one of the hardest things I've come to terms with. Um, we talk about Christian discipleship. Well, you really do learn about what that really means when you're on community. Um, and, uh, and it is incredibly challenging. How do you live as a follower of Jesus in the real world, authentically, with community and with guests? Mm. That's the big challenge all the time. Um, so, you know, people come from all sorts of backgrounds, uh, and people have given up quite um, important jobs, actually, to come and be here. And as, I, and as I was saying earlier, I think one of the things that we've found since being here is that there needs to be a bit of dying, really, letting go of the past to allow God to do something new in us um, for the now and for the future. And that's a real challenge. It's a real challenge to let go of what we were and the status we might have had in the past for God to, to do something new in us now. There are a lot of issues that we can kind of tackle full on here, mm. which is very good for us and good, good for those who come, I think. For instance, in our next programme, we're doing something for church leaders, because one of the things that we've picked up when church leaders have come here for weekend breaks or their own private retreat, how tired and exhausted clergy are. So we're doing something called, um, I'm a church leader, get me out of here week, which we're looking forward to doing next year, really sort of saying it how it is and really trying to encourage and help clergy and other leaders where they are to move on or be resourced in where they are really. Many people are wrestling with profound mm. doubt and disappointment in God and somehow you've got to allow them to say that. The problem with most religious exercises is that you shut people down, you don't open them up. When you say, is there a God, and someone pauses and looks out of one of these lovely big windows, you know that they're thinking about the mm -hmm. times when they thought, blimey, blow this for a game of soldiers, I've been in ministry for 25 years and I don't know if there's a God or not. Mm -hmm. That kind of problem is, uh, it's really good to address that. And, mm -hmm people with that. There is a profound desire in, in most of us here to, to, get, to be in touch with the people who are not churched, the people who normally wouldn't go into a church. Um, so mm. maybe we should say to God, you know, come on, open it up, tell us, mm. make us uncomfortable, get us out of, get us out of the, the norms and tell us where to go and what you want us to mm. do. Something really exciting. Um, one of my fears for Scargill, or anywhere like this, is that it, it congeals, that it, it atrophies, that you settle into a way of doing things that mm. kind of works. And I, I would love to think that you're talking about the wider community and how we contribute to it, 
that if God has a plan for Scargill in this area, that we are open to that. We really keep our ears open, mm. and we don't get shut down mm. uh, into thinking that that this is the way, or the thing we do next month is the way. Um, there could be something really dynamic about to mm. happen. Mm. Uh, we'd hate to miss it. Mm. And I think for us as well, with our wider um, ministry, if you like, what Scargill's about, I really hope that we remain open, that we don't get set into a routine of, we know this this is how it works, this is what will happen, that we keep ourselves very open to what God is trying to do here. And that's uh, that's difficult sometimes, I think. It's very you're, difficult. You're always yeah. th- you always want to do the thing that you know works. Mm. That wonderful quote that we often use here, and I'm trying to remember it exactly, where God loves us enough Exactly as we are, yeah. and far too much to leave us as we are. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and I think that's true mm. of what happens to people at Scargill, that they come in and hopefully, and we want them to experience just love, just mm. a sense that I'm welcomed, this is a good place to be, it's a safe place to be, and it's a safe place for me to explore what God is doing in my life. And just leave just a little bit, or quite a big bit, different depending on what God does with them. And I think one of the things that I keep saying to myself and we say to each other as a community, that we just don't want to get in the way Mm. of what God wants to do here. It's just allowing God to be God and do whatever he wants to do in people's lives and our lives too.